Hello, witches, wizards, and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters. Welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I am baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all of the food and drink we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe, the first from the Chamber of Secrets, where we transformed a series of desserts into a full cooked English breakfast, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if it's your first time swinging by my channel and you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, let's head back into the chamber. Okay, so we're heading back into chapter one, The Worst Birthday, and a little argument has broken out over breakfast, and that's made Harry have a little daydream about all the good times at Hogwarts. Speaking of which, he hasn't heard from his friends in a while, which is making him feel a little bit worse, but on the next page we find out it's his birthday, and I can see our next recipe already. Of course, his hopes hadn't been high. They'd never given him a proper present, let alone a cake. Looks like it's time to make Harry another birthday cake. If you want to recreate this recipe, then all of the ingredients and the measurements can be found on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. So last year we made the birthday cake that Harry received from Hagrid, and if you haven't seen that episode, I'll leave the link down below in the description, but it's year two, so we need to take things up a notch. And this time for Harry's birthday, we're gonna make him a cake of the one thing that he really, really wishes for, and that is some letters from his friends. So we're gonna make a sponge cake, and we're gonna make this one a marbled sponge cake with lots of red for Gryffindor, and then we're gonna decorate it to look like the letters that he should have received. Okay, first things first, we need to make the sponge, and for this one, we're gonna do a vanilla sponge base. So all we're gonna do is cream our butter and sugar together until that is light and fluffy. Once that's nice and combined, you want to lift the lid up, scrape down the sides to make sure it's all incorporated, and give it one final mix for another 10 to 20 seconds. Okay, next we're gonna add in our eggs. So just to make it nice and easy, I'm gonna crack them into a jug first, and then we can pour them in slowly as we mix it through. Okay, so now all our eggs are ready. We're gonna slowly incorporate them into the butter and sugar. And for every egg we add in, we're also gonna add in a tablespoon of flour just to make sure it doesn't curdle. So once all your eggs are incorporated, you just want to lift up the head again and give that another scrape down the sides. And then to finish our sponge mix, we're just gonna add in the rest of the flour along with our vanilla and our mixed spice. Then give that one final mix until it's all combined and we're good to go. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna make this a red and white marble cake to represent the colors of Gryffindor. So we want to take about a third of the cake mix out and we're gonna pop it into this bowl and then we're gonna dye it red. The reason we leave the majority white is because the red will run into it. Add your food dye and then mix it through until evenly combined. Okay, so once our red and vanilla cake batters are ready, it's time to assemble them into the cake pan. And I've got a large 20 centimeter square cake pan and I've greased that and then lined it with baking paper. And all we're gonna do is add in a spoonful of each at a time and then marble it together. Keep on layering it up until all the batter is used. Okay, so once all your cake batter is in, you want to gently remove it off the counter and then tap it slightly to help get a nice even layer. Once that's nice and even, you want to get yourself some skewers and we're gonna use this to marble all of the cake batter together. Keep going until the two are nicely swelled together, but be careful not to overwork it as it will naturally marble some more in the oven. Okay, so that's our cake batter ready to go. So we're gonna pop this into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 45 minutes until it's just started to go golden brown and a skewer should come out clean when placed into the middle. 
While your cake is baking in the oven, you can move on to making the buttercream. And for this, I'm gonna use my simple buttercream recipe. Really, really easy to follow. All we're gonna do is add the butter into our bowl and then whisk that together until smooth. And then once that's nice and smooth, we're gonna add in the icing sugar about a big spoon at a time, whisk that through until it's nice and smooth, and then keep on going until all your icing sugar is incorporated. So once that's all nicely incorporated, we'll just pop the head up, and then we are gonna flavor our buttercream with some vanilla extract. And then just to get a nice smooth consistency, we're gonna add in some milk as well. Scrape down the sides and then carry on whisking for another minute until nice and smooth. Now we want to carry on the marble effect that we've got with our sponges with our buttercream as well. So I'm gonna split this mixture into two and then dye one half bread. All I'm gonna do is add in some red food coloring and then stir through. And then because we want to get a nice clean pattern inside our cake every time we slice it, we're gonna pop these into some icing bags and we'll pipe them on in a second. And then we're going to repeat the process with our white buttercream icing. Pop these into the fridge until you're ready to use them. Once your cake is ready, do a quick skewer check just by popping it into the middle and you should see it comes out nice and clean. That's how you know we're good to go. So next, all I'm gonna do is release it from the pan. I've let it cool slightly in there for 10 to 15 minutes. Then we'll release it and let it cool completely on the side. Really easy with this removable cake pan and then we'll just pop it to one side. So while we wait for the cake to cool completely, we're gonna move on to making our stencil, which we're gonna to use to cut around. Now for this, I want it to look like Harry's letters are being fanned out in his hands because we know Harry's pretty popular. He's probably got a few letters waiting for him. So for this, all I'm gonna do is take a smaller rectangle tin, place it down onto some baking paper and then rotate it into position, tracing around it each time. Then once you've got your shape that you're happy with, all you need to do is cut it out. The great thing about making your stencils with baking paper is that if you're not happy with the shape, you can just throw that away and go again until you are happy. I am pretty pleased with mine, so we'll wait for the cake to cool completely and then cut it out. Once the cake is completely cool, we're gonna level off the top just by slicing a thin layer until it's all even. Once you lift it off, you should reveal your nice marble inside. I'm very happy with how the marbling effect turned out and you can see a little attention to detail when you're making the sponges can have such a great effect at the end. Next up, we just need to use our stencil that we created a moment ago. Just place that down over your cake and then cut around it. Now, as we care about the wizarding world, don't throw away your scraps. There's plenty there to use. So what I like to do is pop them into the freezer and then you can take them out whenever you want to make cake pops or anything. Like that. Okay, next we just need to slice this in two so we can sandwich it together with our buttercream. Okay, so once your two cake layers are ready to go, you need to get yourself your buttercream. And with this, we're gonna pipe out stripes of red and white buttercream all along the cake. So when you cut into it, you see all of those colors in the cross section. But before we do, we want to pipe the border with our white buttercream icing all the way around the edge. And this is gonna create a seal for us that when we crumb coat the whole cake, none of the red blends into the sides. Cut your piping bags so they have a round edge and then go around the outsides with your white buttercream. Once your border is nice and piped, all we're gonna do is alternate with our red and white buttercream all along the cake. And I like to do this diagonally so that when you cut into the cake, no matter which angle you cut at, you'll always be able to see both colors. Once all your buttercream stripes are in the middle, it's time to sandwich it together with your final cake layer. Press it down slightly to secure in place. So as you can see, some of that white buttercream is already oozing out of the sides, and that's why we piped the white border so that it's nice and clear and consistent. Before we move on to crumb coating the outside, we wanna add a little bit of depth to our cake. And that's because the letters are supposed to be stacked, so we don't want it all to be the same level. So I'm just gonna take my rectangular cake tray again and place it into each position of the letters, but then I'm gonna slightly carve away at the cakes so that the last letter is slightly lower down, the middle one in the middle and the top at the top. You don't wanna go too deep because obviously we only got so much cake left, but take off a few millimeters. 
So once you've trimmed down the sponges a little, you should be able to see those three distinct letters. So now we're gonna crumb coat with some of our leftover buttercream and you want to make sure you keep a bit of that definition. So if you just crumb coat the whole thing evenly, then you're not gonna see all of that work you've done. So make sure you get into each of those grooves and keep your letters distinct. Pipe a thin layer of your buttercream icing all around the sides of the cake and then use your offset spatula to spread it evenly. You then want to move on to the top and as we mentioned before, make sure you work into those grooves to keep the definition. Once you're happy with the crumb coat, we need to pop this into the fridge to firm up. So we're gonna leave it in there for about an hour and then it's time to finish off the icing. Next, we're gonna prepare our fondant, which is gonna be the envelope over all of our letters. And if you've ever had some letters that you've left out for a while, you know they start to get that yellowy tinge. So we're gonna replicate that by adding a few drops of yellow to our fondant and rolling that through. And then we're also gonna add some definition after with some cocoa. Place a few drops of yellow food coloring onto your fondant and then roll through. Keep on going until you have your desired color. Once you're happy with your off-white fondant, you can pop that to one side as it's always good to let your fondant rest so the colour settles before you roll it out. We're also going to make some red fondant and this is just going to be for a little stamp and seal that goes onto the back of one of our letters. So all I'm going to do is dye that with some red food colouring and then I'll pop that to one side as well. Once the cake and the fondant is ready, we're gonna roll out the fondant to about half a centimeter thick, making sure it's nice and even. And then in one swoop, we're gonna place it over the cake and smooth that down. Lightly flour your surface with icing sugar, flour your rolling pin, and then roll out your fondant icing. Place a little bit of icing sugar over the top of the fondant and then roll over the back of your rolling pin and lift it over the cake. Carefully work the fondant over the top and sides of your cake. Pinch the corners to add definition to your letters. Trim off your excess fondant and continue working it into place. Now once you've trimmed all the sides, we're going to work a little bit more on the definition because we don't want to put all of our cake carving time to waste. So what I'm going to use is a fondant smoother and just work it into each of those grooves and around the sides to make sure we get some nice defined letters and those 3D levels as well. Once you're happy with the look of your cake, the last bit of fondant decoration we're gonna do is for our wax seal. And for that, I've got this little cookie cutter stamp, which I'm actually gonna to use to indent into our red fondant. So I'm gonna roll this out into a rough shape, still quite thick, because we wanna get that little bulge around the side of the seal. Dip your cookie cutter into icing sugar and then press it into your fondant. Then just cut a rough wax shape around the outside. Just smooth the sides and your seal is good to go. So we're just gonna pop this into the fridge to firm up while we make the last bit of icing for our cake. Okay, so while the icing on our cake is firming up, we're gonna make some raw icing and we'll use this to pipe Harry's address on top of the letters. It's a really, really easy recipe to make. All we're gonna do is whisk up our egg whites, then add in our icing sugar and lemon juice. Now, because we are using raw egg whites, if you have any sensitivities or you're worried about bacteria, what you can do is heat treat them. So that's just in a bain-marie over hot water, whisking them slowly for about two to three minutes to kill off any bacteria before you put them into the recipe. Add your egg whites into the bowl and whisk on a medium speed until light and frothy. Once it's nice and frothy, slowly add in your icing sugar a tablespoon at a time. Once the trail takes about 10 to 15 seconds to melt back into the rest of the mixture, you'll know it's ready. Now you can colour the icing any colour you like. I've chosen green because the writing on his birthday cake last year was green as well and we wouldn't want to break tradition, but also because that is the colour of ink on the letters from Hogwarts. So we're gonna pop that into the mixture, just a little dab, whiz it round until we're happy with the color. The reason we've gone for raw icing is because it will have a thicker consistency and it means we can pay a bit more attention to detail when we're piping out the writing. For that, we're gonna need a writing tip. So I'm gonna pop that into my piping bag and then add in the green raw icing. A quick trick is to pop the piping bag into a glass and then pour in your icing. You can then twist your piping bag and that can sit to one side until we're ready to use it. 
Great, so we are pretty much done. All that's left to do is give it the final decoration. I'm gonna finish off our Hogwarts wax seal. Now for this, you can either leave it on the side like I have for some presentation, or you can place it down here as if it's on the back of one of these letters. But to give it a shiny wax finish, I've taken some jam and thinned it down with hot water. Then I'm just gonna take my brush and then dab that over so it looks like it's just been melted. So I'm happy with the wax seal, so I'm gonna move on to making our letters look a bit aged. And for that, I'm just gonna take some plain cocoa and my brush and then lightly dab that all over. Add a thin amount around the edges of each letter and then also work it into the grooves. Take a kitchen towel and dab the cocoa to blend it. Now the first two letters of mine are gonna be face up. So those are the ones we're gonna pipe the addresses on. But for my last one, I'm gonna make it look like it's face down. So this is an optional step, but if you want to do the same, then just take a fondant tool and make the back of the envelope so you can see where the flap is. Now, once you're happy with the definition, we're gonna move on to the last step, which is piping out our icing. And for this, we're gonna do Harry's address from the second year, which is the smallest bedroom, not the cupboard under the stairs anymore. Of course, if you're doing this for yourself or for a friend, you can always personalize this step. We're gonna use the green royal icing, but if you're not used to piping, then I definitely recommend taking some baking paper and doing a few practice runs. Take your time, as slow and steady always wins the race. Once you're happy with your writing, the last final touch we're gonna do is neaten up the edges. So I've got some of my leftover red buttercream icing and I'm just gonna pipe round to hide the seal. So there you have it. Harry's birthday wish came true. He got his cake and in the form of his letters. I hope you enjoyed this week's recipe for Harry's birthday cake. If you did and you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell and you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. This one has been pretty good, so I'm gonna do a little spell and make this disappear and I'll see you next week. Happy birthday, Harry. <laughs>